Hello there and welcome to my three-part video series on overclocking. To begin, I'd like you to know that I'm an RHCE, a graduate of Wayne State University's computer science program, and I have my master's from Full Sail University in Media Arts. And I work with video on a daily basis, both high-def video, and I use programs like Adobe Premiere, After Effects, and 3ds Max. And getting things done quickly is very important to me. I use a lot of AMD processors, which I overclock, and also i7s, but i7s are a bit on the pricey side, so I try to squeeze as much power as I can out of my AMDs. And I'm going to focus on the AMD Phenom 2 X6 in this series. I know there's a X8 out now, but the X6 is really good and a great value for the money. So let's get started. These are two pages from my motherboard manual. If you've never looked at your motherboard manual before, do that now and have a look and see how things connect in your motherboard. The squares represent chips. This is my processor, CPU. This is my chipset right here, the AMD 770 and AMD SB710, known as my Northbridge and my Southbridge, and collectively they're just called the chipset. The arrows are called buses, and you can think of a bus as an expressway, and instead of cars moving up and down the bus, ones and zeros are moving up and down the bus. And the faster we can get the ones and zeros to traverse or cross the bus, just like in a car, the faster you can go in a car, the faster you can get to where you're going and get your job done. We'll get back to this picture a little bit later on. And we'll get back to this picture a little bit later on. But this just, this just shows the physical layout, where things plug in. And I'm sure you've looked at this one before. So you might be wondering, well, overclocking, what is the clock? Where does the clock come from? On your motherboard, there are oscillators, sometimes called crystals. And this is what they look like before they're soldered in. They're soldered in and then they trim these leads off on the bottom and they're all over your motherboard. I've highlighted them in yellow and when you apply a voltage to them, they oscillate at a particular frequency. So it'll give you a steady stream of ones at like 25 megahertz or 100 megahertz and they're very, very precise. So this helps us keep time in different regions of our motherboard so that everything works together properly. This right here is an actual picture of the motherboard, a photo next to the sketch. And what I'd like to point out to you is that when we start overclocking, things are going to heat up. When we have a transistor, or when you have a transistor, and you change the state of a transistor from a 1 to a 0 or a 0 to a 1, that uses power. The faster you do it, the more power you're using in a particular unit of time and that means that there's going to be more heat to dissipate. These heat sinks that you see around the motherboard are designed to heat or dissipate heat within a particular, you know, they call it heat transfer time. So if you're going to overclock the north bridge or the south bridge, you're going to have to be able to dissipate more heat as those transis transistors transition faster and faster and faster. So depending on what you're going to overclock, you're going to have to make sure that you provide lots of cooling. And any place that has a heat sink is going to need more cooling if it's overclocked. Just real quick, this is a simplified picture of the AMD architecture. Processor has two channels which talk to the DDR3 memory. Hyper transport link talks to the North Bridge. The North Bridge can talk to the PCI Express buses. The North Bridge has a bus where it talks to the South Bridge, and the South Bridge talks to all the slower I.O. devices like the hard drives, the USB, FireWire keyboard, legacy COM port, floppy, etc., etc. Okay? But what I'd like you to notice is that in order to get from the hard drive to the processor, you have to go to the North Bridge, go through this bus, go through the hyper transport bus, and then you finally get that data to the processor. Something else I'd like you to notice is that all the PCI Express buses are competing for one bus to the North Bridge. So that's kind of an interesting thing about the architecture. 
all the different connections, the buses, run at different speeds. So memory can run at three different speeds. The hyper transport link can run at various speeds. You can overclock this one. But the stock speed is 2,000 megahertz or 2 gigahertz. The processor, as you know by now, can run at multiple speeds. Okay, And our crystal, again, it generates a fixed frequency. We run that through something called a multiplier, where we can take the, the clock speed and multiply it by one, one and a half, two. And then we can keep cranking up that clock speed. But just remember, as we crank up the clock speed, things get hotter. There are lots of places you can overclock. You can use the AMD Overdrive software. You can use Gigabyte's Easy Tuner 5. You can use the open source Phenom MSR Tweaker, which you can find on SourceForge. These programs are great, but I don't recommend using any of them for overclocking. The best place to overclock is in the BIOS itself. And the BIOS is a pretty confusing place. So in my second video, we're going to talk about the BIOS, what to change, how to change it, and how to test it and make sure it works. So thanks for watching part one, and I'll see you in part two.